It was spring when the Roman Emperor Constantine issued the summons. Though as yet unbaptized, and in practice at least, still a pagan, Flavius Valerius Constantinus was nonetheless troubled by the bitter wrangling that threatened to split the Christian church apart. For both religious and political reasons, he fervently hoped that an ecumenical conference would settle these disputes once and for all. And the bishops and church elders responded to the call. More than 250 of them traveled to Nicaea. Many were crippled or maimed, victims not only of Roman persecution, but also of violence at the hands of fellow Christians. Week after contentious week, they debated and argued and prayed, until finally by midsummer they had formulated a creed that defined the true beliefs of the church, especially in regards to the nature of Jesus. He was, they declared, true God from true God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things came into being. As the man Jesus, he was fully human. He was born of woman, he suffered, and he died. Yet as the Christ, as God's Son, he was also fully divine. Though the matter was certainly not settled, as subsequent years of theological controversy attest, the creedal affirmation did set forth the orthodox position on the nature of Jesus Christ, a position that would be refined as the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, describing God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. During this same time period, while the church struggled to find doctrinal unity, it also struggled to settle on a canon. Apart from the Hebrew Bible, which was widely accepted as scriptural authority, there was little agreement on what should either be included or omitted. Many inspirational works circulated among the Christian communities. Along with the four familiar Gospels and the letters of Paul, Church members also read the Shepherd of Hermas, the Didache, the Book of the Jubilees, the Epistle of Barnabas, letters written by Clement of Rome and by Ignatius of Antioch, and such other works as the Life of Adam and Eve, the Gospel of Philip, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, and the Gospel of Thomas. All of these writings were to varying degrees considered to be divinely inspired, it was not until A.D. 365 that the 27 books of the New Testament first appeared in a letter from Athanasius of Alexandria as the only source of salvation and of the authentic teachings of the Gospel.